Hey guys, welcome back to our Adventure Wagon interior conversion kit. Uh, we're moving into part two and we are finishing up this driver's side over here. If you guys remember last time in part one, this driver's side was not finished because we needed to have access to uh, these two holes right here in order to get our insulation to feed in the back. So this is what the insulation looks like. Uh, it's made by 3M and uh, it's really popular in the van community because uh, it's hydrophobic which uh, it does not like to uh, uh, hold water or get wet. If it does get wet it dries very easily. Um, doesn't mold so a lot of people like to use this. Um, it is more on the expensive side but I think uh, the benefits outweigh the cost on this product. Anyway you're gonna get this with Adventure Wagons kit uh, you're going to get enough for the whole entire van. So the reason I paused on this, and it's not part of the part one adventure wagon install, is because, like I said, we need to get access to this hole here and up here. So right now we just have this held on by painter's tape, a set screw here, and then a set screw back behind here. And then what we're going to do is, uh, in the instruction videos, uh, let's say the best way is to get like a long, uh, rod or a piece of like all thread or something like that and be able to put it in this hole and then actually push it through this cavity and then that's part one and then you have a second piece um, and then I'm just going to do the same thing and that way we have both of these pieces of insulation back behind here so that's the first thing we're going to do today and the second thing is we're going to put our hush mat just in this top section and then we'll follow it up by putting in our uh, piece of insulation that goes into that cavity. Uh, this is nice because you got a lot of room to work with back here. Um, but once you have this part in, you won't be able to move it around this. Uh, there's a little beam back here. So to gain access to it, that's why I haven't put this piece on. But once the hush mat is in, uh, once the um, insulation is in, We'll riv nut these. Uh, this one actually does take rivets. So we've got a couple here that we got to put in. Um, and that piece actually serves, if you saw in uh, the first video, it actually serves as the uh, cable tray. So this cable right here will actually be uh, supported by this once it goes in. And it's going to go in just like that. Now again, as you're working on this kit, be very careful. There's all kinds of uh, little spikes and sheet metal. The sheet metal is extremely, extremely sharp. So just make sure that you're taking all the precautions, you're wearing the proper gloves. Don't cut yourself. I cut myself a couple times and I've done this a couple times. So um, yeah, make sure you wear gloves. It's very sharp. So we're gonna knock that out. And then once we're finished with that, uh, the good news is our AW 1033 windows from C.R. Lawrence came in and we've got all those for this van so we can go ahead and start uh, templating out where the windows are going to go um, and once we know where the windows are going to go like for example this one that's over the kitchen galley we can go ahead and start doing the rest of our hush mat uh, after we cut the windows out so the reason I'm holding off and putting the hush mat in right now is hush mat has like a, it's like a tacky texture and if there's any metal filings that are cut off from the window, they're going to adhere to that um, piece of hush mat, the tacking part. And those are raw filings, raw steel filings, so they will rust over time with moisture that uh, does come through the wall. Um, and that's one thing you got to deal with vans is uh, controlling the moisture, making sure you're always ventilating with the roof vent, because uh, this is a pretty sealed environment. And, with you breathing and exhaling, it's putting a lot of humidity into the van. So you want to make sure your fan's on as much as you can do it. You're always ventilating so that you don't have um, any rust issues. So we prevent that by putting rust preventative on every single surface that is not painted or uh, surfaces that have been drilled into or riveted, just to make sure they don't rust. So those metal filings, 
um, adhering to the hush mat. We want to prevent that by doing all of our cutting of these windows first, cleaning everything out, vacuuming, blowing it down, wiping it out. And then once we're finished with that, we can actually go through, the van is clean, we can put the hush mat in, then we can put the insulation in, and then we'll move on to our final and third part of the video, which is in, uh, installing the rest of the panels, the actual uh, upholstered panels. So we're gonna go ahead and knock this out, get this complete, and uh, yeah, that's gonna be our next step. All right, guys, welcome back. We're gonna go over a couple of things that we're gonna use to install the hush mat. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna install it back in here. And if you don't know what hush mat is, it's essentially a material that dampens the sound. Um, and it does that by changing the frequency of whatever, or the resonant frequency of whatever material you're putting it on. For us, we're putting it on sheet metal, and that's just a big fancy way of saying we're taking something that is a high pitch noise and we are turning it into a lower pitch noise. So we're taking the vibration and we're slowing it down. So it's more like a thud instead of a ping, like tinty sound. Um, that sheet metal sounds like if you don't take care of it uh, with this type of material. Now in the past, if you're a car audio guy or girl, um, you may have used the product called Dynamat, and that's used for like trunks and doors of cars so that if you have subwoofers in your car, the whole thing doesn't like rattle pieces. Uh, it's the same exact thing, same concept. So we're using the hush mat. Um, hush mat is what comes in the Adventure Wagon interior conversion kit, and it's much thinner than any Dynamat that I've used. And um, what's nice about that is it's, it's really easy to work with. Uh, you can actually cut it with uh, a pair of scissors. Um, these are actually carpet shears, so they're pretty heavy duty. Um, most people won't have those, but if you have some of these, these are some old school carpet shears that my grandfather used, I still have. Um, they're super sharp. And then you're gonna wanna use this, uh, one of these rollers here, if you guys can see that. This is just purchased off of Amazon, and I've got like two of them. Uh, if you're in a pinch, you can go to like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and they do have these uh, rubber rollers. Uh, the handles are not so good on them, but if you are in a pinch, you can use those. And so we're going to open this up here. So you can see we got a rubber roller. All right, nice wooden handle so you can grip it. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this material to size. And we're going to stuff it up in here. I haven't cut it yet, but we're gonna stuff it up in here. And then we're gonna push it down. And remember, the uh, sheet metal is extremely sharp. So you gotta be very careful when you're putting this in here. But we're going to go ahead and get this piece uh, cut, and you want to look at the top. And right here, there's a there's a bar behind here you got to watch out for. So this bar, um, you can go up underneath it. So that's what we're going to try to do. And then down here at the bottom, if you look, we actually end right here. That's where we end. So from here to here, you cannot access all the way in the bottom. So since we know that, we're only going from here to here, we'll go ahead and take our hush mat and we're gonna cut it um, probably right here. And that looks like it's halfway. So let's just double check that. Let's see if we can just cut. Perfect, yep. So we're just gonna fold this in half and then we're just gonna cut right down this seam right here. And what you can do is you can uh, you can have like a cutting board or cutting mat and you can cut this out if you want to. Um, but this hush mat, it's so thin that it's no problem. And I'm actually gonna move the camera just a little bit. There we go. Perfect, okay. So we got it cut. 
got our piece. And so this one should fit right up in here. Um, I'm probably going to do this side first, then this side, and then I'll get another mat. I'll cut it in half and I'll put one more piece right here. And so, uh, so what that's going to do for us is this noise right here, that ting, we're going to tap it again after we put this hush mat in. You'll see the, the difference that it makes. And then so right here, you're just going to peel it off. Now, I keep saying be careful with everything, sharp edges. So this is actually an, a foil-backed piece, and this edge right here is also extremely sharp. So just be careful. And a couple different ways you can do this. You can, you can peel this whole thing off, or you can do this just to get it started up in there and then peel it down from the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. That way, if I need to reposition it, I can do that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to stuff this up under this beam right here. Okay, we got all of our hush mat in on the top. So we're gonna go ahead and put our insulation in and then we'll move on to installing this bar right there. So one thing I did was I took the whole entire cardboard box apart. I laid everything out on the table and I did that so that I could organize, uh, visualize where everything went in the van. So I got Everything for the top panels, I got the middle part, I got the bottom part, driver's side versus passenger, and even the ceiling and then the headliner. So all that is on the table, um, organized. So once I get done with the windows, the hush mat, I know exactly where the insulation is going. But the main reason I took everything out of the box is because the, uh, the way that they name all these pieces like D-top-1A and then this is D-top-1A but this is uh, labeled part 3, this is labeled part 5. It's not very clear um, what piece goes where and since everything is pre-cut if you put something in the wrong place because uh, it looked like it fit but it didn't go there and you're gonna run out of it somewhere else. So what I did is I needed to find this piece. This piece, the name of it, is, it's part one and two. Uh, and the part one says D-top-HOR for horizontal-C, and this is D-top-horizontal-D. So horizontal-C, horizontal-D, drivers, drivers, top, top. So I got that, but when you're going through all of the other codes and stuff like that, the videos that I've watched online, they don't really clearly show exactly where everything goes. So I'm gonna do my best on this 148 inch to tell you guys where each piece is going in the van uh, just to help out. But if you lay it all out on the table, it'll make it much easier because you can visually see where it goes in the van and then you actually really don't have to worry too much about uh, what these numbers say. Um, anyway, that was a long-winded way of just saying, hey, lay everything out, you'll find where it goes, and then, and then you'll know. So these two pieces, again, they're number three and five, and one is driver's top 1A, driver's top 1A. Okay, so we're going to take these, and we're going to put both of these inside of here because if I go over here, coming back, we have the same for 
We have the same for passenger top 1B, passenger top 1B. So these two will go passenger top right there. So now we know that we have our, we have our part for the opposite side of the van so that we can use both of these. Because as we get further along in this build, what you're going to find is, depending on how you're cutting windows out for your van, uh, if you're replacing this slider door um, area with like a T-vent window, which I'm doing, um, you're going to start to have extra insulation. So, um, you know, you can use that somewhere else in the van because the windows are there. Same thing for me. Once this window gets cut out, there will be no insulation here. Uh, so yeah, you'll be able to use it in different areas. But if one area has two layers like this, um, that's good. That's just a bonus in my opinion. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and put this in and we'll keep going. And the way that I'm going to put this in is I'm going to put it through this middle part and then I'm just going to pull it through and push it over there. And you can actually see my arm goes all the way to my elbow. So that's how much room we got. So we can just put this here where my elbow is and put this up here and that's, that is pretty good. So if you guys want to, you don't have to be as detail oriented as I, I am, but uh, if you want to, you can like fold it and put a piece of tape and that way you know that you got this. Uh, you can have this land where you want to. So say you want it to land right here and this is uh, where you want it to stop. You can just get a piece of tape on there. Go ahead and pull this through. Again, watch out for the sheet metal. Okay, come through here. And then the bottom and top ends, just watch out for them because they're what's going to uh, get jammed up. So get that in where you want it. And again, we got a big bar here, so we need to make sure that we uh, get behind it. And actually what I'm going to do I'm going to have the left go all the way there, but then on this right side, I'm going to try to stuff, I'm going to shift it over a little bit to the right. So this is our tape we had. Don't need that. Okay, so now we're going to take our other piece and do the same thing. Just watch your piece behind it to make sure you're not dragging it. And I'm sure there's different ways that you could do this, but this is just the way I'm doing it. So I'm really getting that in that cavity up there.
I'm actually going to pull this towards me a little bit. I really get that air space. So don't want this stuff smashed together. Um, if you're actually putting windows in and you have the bump outs in the back, you're only going to use one, you're only going to want to use one layer of insulation because the way insulation works is it traps air. Um, and if you compress it, there's nothing inside to actually hold air, and air is the insulator. So if you smush it, you, your insulation value goes way down. So just like if you're, you got a sleeping bag and you're going hiking, you want to keep your sleeping bag lofted after you're done hiking. You don't want to keep it crammed in a bag. Same concept with this stuff. You want to keep it to where it's nice and lofted, not smushed in here. So that's why I'm kind of pointing it out. I mean, just almost like a pillow, you know, like fluffing a pillow. So now we got nice, nice loft, nothing smushed. And we're going to have good insulation back here. All right, next step, we're going to take our piece right here. Again, we're in the 148 inch uh, transit, 148 inch wheelbase. We're using TH12. And TH12, right here we have this permanent marker. That's where I had it prior. So this TH12 is gonna go right here. There's a little foot it's gonna help you keep it uh, where it needs to go. Don't, don't worry about this, we'll do that later. That's that foot, and then over here, we've already uh, made sure that it's uh, level uh, or where the holes need to be. So that's there. So we're going to get our clamps. We're going to clamp this into place. Um, we're going to finish drilling our holes, and then we're going to get the uh, riveter. We're going to rivet this thing into place. So these clamps that I'm using, these are just like clamps from Lowe's or the DeWalt brand. Um, you can use anything. I got some stuff from Harbor Freight. Uh, but what's nice about these is, especially if you're one uh, one person installing this by yourself, it'll really help you just get everything exactly where you need it to be. And it'll keep it out of the way for when you go to actually drill or you're riveting these pieces together. Put it right where our line is. And as you crimp down on this, it will drift. So just make sure you correct it before you actually drill the hole. And actually one's just really, only one's holding it down, so don't need that one. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to yeah, we're going to get our rivets, and we have uh, pre-drilled holes right here, and so that's what we're going to use to put a rivet into. Now, this piece has rivets. This piece has the uh, rib, ribbed nuts, so they're a little bit different, but most of your pieces, like you saw in part one, are going to have the rib nuts, not the rivets. This one is just rivets because... There are no existing uh, factory holes to enlarge, so we've got to create our holes. So we've already got those in there. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll do that. And uh, before we actually rivet this, we're going to take this off uh, because we have to do our rust preventative. Don't forget that. All right, in this next part, I want to make sure that we... Uh, show how we do the rust preventative. It's really extremely self-explanatory, but it is a process that I've found so easy that I kind of forget it, and sometimes I miss it. So, uh, and I actually have to right before I put this on, go back and then do it. So every single one in this van is knocked out. I've got it. But I just know it's really easy to miss this step. So make sure that this rust preventative that you get in the kit, uh, they give you a brush, but you can use any type of painter brush. 
Make sure you use this. Don't forget to use this. It's really, really important. Uh, so I'm going to show you what to do. So we went ahead and there's another tool. Let me get that out. So this tool right here, in the camera, this is called a deburr tool. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to take off any burrs that you have on the holes that you drilled out right up here. Uh, so we have our three holes. And remember, these holes are going to be different than the rivnet holes because we're obviously going to be riveting them in here. So these rivet holes, what we're going to do is you're just going to take this tool and you just put it in the hole. You just rotate it around a couple of times. Clean it out. And just getting those burrs out so the rivet's going to go in nice and clean. And then the next step what we're going to do is we're going to do the rest preventative first. So we're going to open the bottle. Now this stuff will turn black. So it's like a milky white when you first get it. And then as it ages, it turns black. Uh, so it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, like a <laughs> get that in focus. It's kind of like a gray, gray color right now. And uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to take it on the brush. And then, really simple, we're just going to go through, put it through the hole, and just do a little twist. Get some more. And don't, you can be generous with this stuff. Don't worry about not being generous. Okay. And I'll show you why we're being generous here in a second. So I do that, that way I get the front face, because if you put, if you put this on, and then to the rust preventative, there's a gap that doesn't get rust preventative on it. Um, so if you drip any of this on the floor, it's going to, I'll show you a different part of the van, it's going to turn black, and that's okay. Um, so it kind of goes unclear, or a milky white, and then it turns black. But once it turns black, that means that it's protected. Okay, so we're going to take our piece just like we did a couple seconds ago. I'm going to put this up here. Get our holes lined up. Then we're going to get some rivets to make sure that the alignment's correct. And so some will go in. Okay, for example, these went in. This one. So yeah, probably one of these is going to be a little tough. That's okay. Because all we're going to do is we're just going to, uh, I've got a little bit of tape behind here to catch any filings that might come out from the drill bit. And we're going to take our solid carbide 3 16th inch drill bit. Solid carbide is very, very important. This is boron steel up here. This is more like regular steel down here, but this boron steel is it's extremely hard to drill through. So we're going to put up here, and we're just going to get our drill. That's it. We're just kind of chasing that hole to kind of get us back to where we want to be. Um, and before we put a rivet in it, let's just go ahead and test it. There you go. So that's in. So I'm going to keep these two in. And this is the one in the middle, is one, that's the one I'm going to rivet first to the wall. And so we got everything in, we got our, we have our, we've got our hush mat, we've got our insulation, so we don't have to go through this 
uh, access hole up here. Everything's good to go. And we're going to take this middle rivet out. And we're going to take our rust preventative. And we're just going to hit that hole one more time. Don't worry about being messy. When this dries, it'll be a black ring. That's okay. That is the rust preventative doing its thing. And then we're going to take our rivet and we're going to go get our air compressor line. And we actually have two air compressor uh, or air rivet guns. Uh, one that we have, this is a 3 16th. And the other big one uh, that's really nice to have for the roof or the ceiling of the van. This is a, um, I think it's a quarter inch rivet. So we're going to take this and we're going to go ahead get our safety glasses on. I'm going to take the rivet right here. I'm going to put in the gun right there. And then we're going to take this. We're going to push it straight into that hole. And I'm going to get my gloves on. So once you get a process to this, a method to this, it's, it goes much faster. Obviously this is for educational purposes, so I'm going a little bit slower here. We got our gun, I put my gloves on because I'm going to be grabbing this right here. And then I'm going to put this in, I'm going to push forward. One pull, two pulls, and it pops off. And then when the, it'll come out the back. So if you don't want to scratch anything, just go ahead and let it uh, fall in your hand. Okay, so now that we have this in place, okay, we can just, we can pick either side. I'm probably gonna go with this right side. And I'll take that rivet out. Make sure we rust prevent. So we got a rust preventative. Don't forget the rust preventative. All right. Our gun. And go over here. Push it in. And then we have a uh, right underneath here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but right under here we have the uh, permanent marker line that we know is our level point. And so we just want to make sure that that is where it needs to be. Push in. And then we got that riveted right there. Okay. That's good. And we can actually take our thing that held our metal dust, a little piece of tape, take that off. And then we'll move over here, do our rust prevent, and then we'll do this last. We'll do this last one. And sometimes you may need a pair of pliers to get this uh, out that was holding the spot. Because this, these kind of change where it was, don't forget, rust prevent. I'm gonna say it like a million times. It is so important. Let's put that in the hole. Give it a little spin.
It's in here. Hold the van and push in. All right, so now we have our upper bar ready to go. Take our clamp off. Okay, so we're done with this upper part. Got this done, now we're gonna move on down to this part. <clears throat> so now we can take our tape cable tray just stuff it up here where it's gonna go. Take my clamp off, I was using that earlier. Okay, so now we're here. And this will be our next step. Okay, now we move down to this bottom side. We have a set screw here, and then we got another one over here. And like in part one, those are going to allow you to temporarily hold this in while you drill these holes out. So now we're going to go ahead and undo them. And we got painter's tape up here just to kind of help us out so it doesn't fall on the floor. Shouldn't fall on the floor. Now we just lift up. And this part comes out. We just lay it on the floor. And now here's that hole that I was talking about. So this hole is open now. Now we can actually stuff things in there. And this is the only way to gain access to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to get um, a piece of threaded rod or uh, whatever I have in the shop. We're gonna step this through here and have this make its all the way, make its way all the way to here, about right where this hole is. And then that'll stop. And then we'll do the same thing for the second piece. And then that'll allow us to uh, get the insulation in here. All right, so I'm gonna try this. I got this piece of uh, there you go. I got this piece of PVC. Um, it's actually what I use on the corrugations and the van floor to actually level the floor out. It's really great because it's PVC, it's not going to rot. But it is stiff enough and flexible enough that I can actually get it all the way in here because you got to have a constant bend as you come in. And then I get a little mark right there that I made. And if I take it out, I'm actually making it all the way to the inside. So what I'm going to do and since I want this to be half the distance, uh, so this is the final part going to be like this. So I really just want to have the uh, this first piece pretty much go to right here, so we can measure that, and we want this bar to stop. Wrap this on here. Okay, so we want this to stop, but right there. Yeah. So actually we want it to stop right here. So we're gonna put a piece of tape on it right here so that we know that's as far as we wanna push it. I'm just gonna take a piece of painter's tape. I'm just gonna tape it. Just like that, right there, make sure it's in focus. Then we're going to take our number one piece, driver's top horizontal C. All right, I'm going to flip it over here. Like that. Okay. So that way we actually have it flipped over the bar. We got it halfway. And then this blue piece of painter's tape, that's gonna actually tell us where we're going to stop. Right here. So we only get one time, one chance to do this. And 
And you don't want it to go like this, you want it to be vertical. So you want it to maintain like that on the inside as much as you can. So let's see if we can do that. And I'm just stuffing the bottom and stuffing the top as it goes. Remember to wear gloves because you're touching that sheet metal. Okay, so when we get it in, make sure you don't push it, like pause, make sure you're nice and vertical. And then we're going to take it and we're going to go where the blue line meets right here. We're going to push it in. Yep, and we're going to stop right there. Okay, we're going to come back. We're just a little bit further. Come back. So now we know the end of it is right here at the end. Got that insulation in there. So now we're going to take the second piece. We're just going to do the same thing. This is number two, driver's top, driver's top horizontal D. Okay, and we're actually going to stop right there, and we're going to stuff this right behind here. So just a little bit more. Okay, right there. I'm going to take this out. Pull this one back, and then we're going to stuff this one in. So that goes in the back section. And then this front part just goes in the front section. Just get that loft a little bit. Okay, so now we have insulation all the way up into here. Okay, so that is good. All right, so next we're going to make sure that we rust prevent these holes. Uh, and then once we rust prevent, we're going to put the piece up. <coughs> And then we'll rev nut everything back together. Okay, we got a rust prevent. Open it up. And we've already pretty much went ahead and we've got all the. Let's do this one more time. It's pretty much all of them. A little bit of deburr. If you leave your brush for too long, this is actually going to get really hard on it. So you just put it back in here, get it wet again, and it should loosen up on you. So we got one here we're going to do liberally. Liber, 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 liberally add the rust preventative. Don't worry if you go outside, you will not see it. And then your set screws also rust prevent where you drilled your set screws. Any raw metal, just put this stuff all over it.
Okay. All right, so. Looking good. <clears throat> okay, grab your set screws. Set our piece back up here. Painter's tape is nice, it holds it right in place. Gonna get out a rust preventative one more time. And then hit the inside. Okay, and then the next step, we're gonna get our riv nuts, get those into place. We're gonna riv nut tool that attaches to our drill. Uh, we'll go ahead and set those into place, and then this will be complete. And then we will move on to the next portion is we need to locate this uh, roof vent by putting in our top ceiling panel. And then that will that'll be the last hole we need to locate. Uh, and then, the next portion of this video will be going into doing the layout to cut out all the windows in the van. So pretty excited. So I was talking earlier to you guys that I had a uh, special tool off of Amazon and this is the uh, Astro Pneumatics uh, XL Rivet Nut Drill Adapter. It's model number ADN38 and uh, I'm sure I'll have a link here somewhere. Um, it does M5, M6, M8, and M10, and I believe today we are using, yep, M6. So these little rib nuts are M6 rib nuts that we're going to be using. In this drill, the way it works is you reverse it, and the stem comes out, and then you can actually, let's see, there you go. So you reverse it, the rib, nut, the rib nut comes off, and then, and then when you put it back on, you'll just put it on the tip right here, and then you'll actually drill it forward, and then it'll catch it, uh, and then that'll be on the, it'll be on the tip. And then you'll take this, and then you're going to put it right in. If you guys wonder what I'm doing, I'm looking at the monitor, make sure everything's in focus. So you're going to take this, go straight into the holes, doesn't matter. We've already done our checklist. We've done the uh, rust preventative. So we're going to put this in here. Everything's lined up, get our set screws, all good. And you're going to have to practice with this a couple times to understand the clamping force. Um, it's more of an audible uh, noise, which you're just going to get in here, and then it's going to catch, and then you're going to hold, you're going to hold this part of the drill, and it's just one, three, three clicks, and then you're just going to reverse it, and then this guy 
is not going anywhere. Alright guys, down here at the bottom of the video, we are working on sizing up this top up here for our ceiling and uh, we want to put the ceiling panel in so we can locate our hole for the max air fan. So we're going to go ahead and take and tape off of here and I've loosened this side and so I'm just working over here on this other side, getting this tape off of here. Fortunately I use very cheap painter's tape to protect this and it's not coming off very easy. But it is protected, so I guess that was the whole point. Um, but we're going to get this off all the way to where we can access all of these uh, screws and get it loose so that we can actually lift up the panel up in here. And I'm not taking all the screws out, I'm just loosening them up a lot. Alright guys, we have this installed, as you can see, and every all the corners are nice and even, especially over here, these gaps are all even. Uh, the best part about this is back here, where the um, fan goes, so we get the rib and we got this cutout directly, directly on this uh, rib right here. So it's exactly going to be exactly 14 inches from there, which is excellent. I'm really glad they did that. I don't know why I would think they would do it differently. Um, but yeah, that is what they did, which is excellent. So we will, yeah, take it from there. All right, so to finalize this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, right here, I'm going to trace this out. And get that all ready to go and then in our next video what I'm going to do is uh, that will be doing the um, hush map for the rest of the van I'm sorry we'll be cutting windows out we'll be doing hush map for the whole entire van we'll be doing insulation and then we'll be doing the final uh, upholstered panel installation and then we will be done with the adventure wagon system really cool so that should be all done by the end of next week and then we'll go ahead and knock out um oh by the way cutting the windows out is not part of the timeline for the adventure wagon install so that's completely different so the time that it should take to do the adventure wagon no windows is different obviously than when you're cutting out one two three four five holes in the van which is what we're doing. So stick around for that. That'll be coming up in the part three of this series. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. It'll be coming out very soon. Um, maybe already here at the end of the video. So click on one of those links. You can watch part three of the Adventure Wagon Interior Conversion Kit. Mm -hmm.